Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's see if we can apply the rules to an example like this. Here we have a truss. We have a load at the very top. We have the two supports at A and B. Which of these members, if any, are zero force members? Well, if you remember the rule that if there's a joint, and here's a joint right here, that has three members, there's one, and then I can see that there's perfect symmetry here. But take a look over here, there's three members right here. The first two members are collinear, the third one is not collinear. Therefore, you would say that this member cannot have a force on it that must therefore be a zero force member. Now, the interesting thing is, now that we've eliminated this member here, because this is now a zero force member, and of course we have symmetry on the other side, you can now in interpret this as this member not being there. So if you remove this member for a moment, then realizing when you look at this joint, in this case, and we can no longer include this joint because it's a zero force member, now we have a similar situation where we have a joint with only three members, because this one doesn't count, these two are collinear, the third one is not, which means that this member here must also be a zero force member, and because of symmetry, this member must also be a zero force member. And now we can continue. Again, you can assume then that this member is not there because it's not contributing any force to this joint. We now look at this joint right here. And again, we have a joint with only three members. The fourth one, since it's a zero force member, can be ignored. We have those two members that are collinear, therefore this member here must be a zero force member. Over here again, because of symmetry, we can do the same over there. And finally, again, at this position right here, at this joint, notice we can eliminate this member here because it's a zero force member. Therefore we have a joint with three members, two that are collinear, the third one that is not, therefore the third one must be a zero force member. That means that this one here must be a zero force member as well. Finally, now let's take a look at this joint right here. Now normally we'd say, well, this is a force, a four member joint, but two of the four members are zero force members. Actually, it's one, two, three, four, a five member joint. But these two are zero force members, so they can be ignored. Now we're down to just a three member joint. Two of the three members then would be collinear, the third one is not, which means this member also does not have a force. It's also a zero force member, even though there's a load pointing directly towards it. But notice that if you eliminate this joint right here, the forces, the force, the load force is then carried by those two members. It is distributed in this direction and in this direction and held by the two ends right here, which means that all those members here must be under tension, otherwise the two endpoints would be pushed outward. And so these members are really keeping these members from collapsing, so the load is carried by these two members because they cannot go to the right over here. And that's how we take a look at those members, and that's how we find the zero force members of this particular structure. It's a good example because a lot of them are zero force members, but that's how it's done.